Space. It seems to go on and on forever. But then you get to the end and the gorilla starts throwing barrels at you. G'day guys and welcome to my lab, or should I say my summer lab. You see my normal lab on the other side of that wall there is uh, already on just the fourth day of summer hitting about 40 degrees. So I've moved inside to the air conditioning so that I can keep working. Now Futurama first jumped onto our screens in 1999, but it is not the cartoon that I want to talk about today, but rather the game we see Fry playing right at the start there called Monkey Fracker. Monkey Jr. Fracker Jr. is a side-scrolling space shooter, and I have not done a tutorial series on that yet. We have done a normal platformer, we've done a, a 3D Wolfenstein style, and we've also done a 2D top-down ARPG, and all of those series are still continuing, but I wanted to start something a little bit different. So I thought that Monkey Fracker Jr. was a great thing to uh, be... Uh, take from being a cartoon conception to a reality using Godot. And that is what this series is all going to be about. So first up, let's have a look at what assets we're going to need to make this happen. Obviously going to need our background. Now I'm doing this with a PNG, but you could actually do it with a color rect. And that's something we could talk about whilst we do it. We're going to need our star field. We need a ship to fly, um, some planets with added explosion animations. Uh, we need our monkey that bursts out of a, a planet and starts throwing barrels at us. Uh, we're also going to need our end graphics. So our game over and winner screens, we're going to need those barrels that the monkey's going to throw and also our lasers that we're Let's going to expand shoot. that out now and actually think about the structure of the entire setup here. So here is a bit of a rundown of what we're going to do. We need a certain set of things. So we're going to need our main viewer, our background scene. We need a scene for our player, a scene for our planet, uh, our monkey, barrel, start and end screens. We need some singletons or some global type scripts. So one we're going to have is global and the other is going to be score manager to, yes, manage the scores. Uh, we also need a UI to handle a few extra details we're going to add into this game and the laser. We've also got here a list of what scenes are going to be associated with those items, what scripts are going to be associated with those items, items and scenes, and then also what assets we need. And this is just to be a handy little resource for us as we progress through to make sure we don't forget by the anything. end of the series this is what your file structure is going to look like so we are going to organize it into three different directories we're going to have a or folders an asset folder a scenes folder and a scripts folder and this is what you will have in those folders by the end of the series so we've got a bunch of things there for our uh, graphics and our sound we've got all of our different scenes and then all of our different where scripts. are you getting these assets from well you need to jump onto my itch and my github now on the itch page there is also this game ready there for you to play in the browser so you can have a go at that as well to see if it is a game that you want to play or or make over the course of this series before you get started all right let's get started so the first thing you're going to need is the godot engine and if you don't already have that head to godotengine.org and you're just going to download our latest version here so you can see our, the latest version is 4.2 that's only just come out that's what i've updated to on my system so that's what you're going to be needing to download as well. If you've already got Godot and it's not the latest version, I recommend updating just in case there are any features that I might be making use of that are in the new version that aren't in the version that you have. So godotengine.org, download the latest for your system and then we will be ready All to right, get So let's uh, open up Godot and dive in that way. And when we first open it up, we're going to get a bit of a warning that we're just going to click cancel on. So let's uh, open up our um, Godot app. I'll shrink my head down. Actually, let's hit cancel on that. And then I'll shrink my head down here because it's far too big. There we go. So we've cancelled the little warning. I've shrunk my head down so we can see everything. And this is what we're dealing with. So when we first load in, we're going to have, uh, you know, no projects. So let's create a new one. So let's click on the plus new. I'm going to call this Monkey Fracker Junior. And I'm going to create that folder. I'm going to set it to compatibility mode. And we're just going to hit none for Git and go create and edit. And it's going to make that folder for us called Monkey Fracker Junior in the location we've chosen. For me, it's just my root. So this is what we're greeted with when we first load up, right? So this is our 3D view. And we're not going to need this view because we're going to be working in 2D. So if you click on the 2D view, 
you can see straight away, this is our sort of our canvas that we're working with that you can see those lines around. So that's kind of the screen we're gonna be playing around with when we get there. Now, that's kind of the most obvious part that's in the middle there. So we've already clicked on our 2D view up the top. So it's 3D view, there's our script view and our asset library. We're not gonna be playing with our asset library at all. We're not gonna be using 3D at all, but we will use scripts and we will use 2D. Over here on this side, this is our sort of our scene menu. And when we're making things in Godot, we're going to be using scenes and nodes. And this all sort of happens up here, including the scene tree showing us how everything's related. Down here is our file system, and uh, we're going to have those three folders um, in here. In fact, we can do that right now. If I um, right click, I can go new folder, and I can call one scenes, hit OK. Right click again, new folder, call one scripts, hit OK. Or well, one more time, the other one was assets. So there we go, we've already set up our file structure with our folders, so we know where we're gonna save things when we get to that stage. Okay, we've talked about our canvas already. Over on this side, we've got our uh, inspector and also our node menus, and we'll get to those later on. And up the top here is where we can um, hit play to run our game, or we can just run the scene that we're on with the little clapperboard one. So that's a quick tour of the game. We've already kind of started working on it, so why don't we just keep on going? What we're gonna do to start with is work on our player scene because I think that's probably a good thing to, to do at the beginning so we've got something tangible to work with so we're going to click over here into our scene window we're going to click on other node and we're going to search for character body 2d and as you start typing it into the search bar it finds it for you basically so character body 2d double click on that one that's what we're going to use but if we leave it called character body 2D, anytime we use this particular type of node in any other scene, it's going to get a bit confusing. So we're going to rename these nodes as we go along as well. This one here, if we right click on it, go down to rename, I'm going to call it um, player because that kind of makes sense. All right, so that's our player character body 2D. That sort of gives us something that we can manipulate. It inherits properties from this character body 2D and we'll get into that in a bit more detail later. Now, on its own, that character body 2D doesn't do very much at all. We need to give it a some sort of image to represent our player. So if we have our player selected, that node selected called player, we're gonna click on the little plus sign again. And instead of character body 2D, this time we're gonna search for an animated sprite 2D. So that's it coming up there, animated sprite 2D. We can leave that one called animated sprite 2D. The main thing we need to worry about is our root node. We'll change some of the others if we get repetition, but we're only gonna have one animation in here so we can leave it like that. So we've got a couple of warnings showing up here. Why don't we deal with the one that's on our player first? So if we click the little triangle, it says this node has no shape, so it can't collide or interact with other objects. Consider adding a collision shape 2D or collision polygon 2D as a child to define its shape. So our player node is, uh, at the moment, has no way of um, running into enemies or the floor or, or anything like that because we haven't given it any shape or form. And we do that in Godot with these collision shapes. So if I click back on my player node and I click on the plus, I can then search for collision shape and put that one in there. And that will then allow us to make a shape over here, but we're not gonna do that just yet. I think we need something to make the shape around. So let's click back on our animated Sprite 2D, click over here in our inspector window on animation. And then where we've got sprite frames empty, we're gonna click on empty, click on new sprite frames, and then click on it one more time. And that brings up a new menu down the bottom here. So straight away, we've got a default animation that we haven't done anything with, um, as well as a whole bunch of things. So this is where we're gonna to need to start bringing our assets into the game. So for this one, we're gonna need our uh, ship.png, and we're gonna to wanna to put it into our assets folder. So I'm gonna find that now and drag it on in to make sure that I have the right things in my game. And if you haven't done so yet, you're going to want to go and download the uh, download the either GitHub stuff or the itch stuff so that you can load it in as well. So I've got my ship here. I'm dragging it in. And that's it being added to my assets folder. So now here in my animation frames, I'm going to be able to actually um, use that file we just made to create some animations. So the way I'm gonna do that is clicking on this little grid-like icon here. So we click on our grid, and then we're gonna go and find that ship.png in our assets. So there it is there. We're gonna to wanna to open that one eventually. 
And then I'm going to show you how we actually go through and set up the animations. So uh, I'm just getting a little bit of a spinning pinwheel of death. We just need to be patient. There we go. All right. So it's opened it up, but there's all these weird grid lines. We need to actually tell it how many horizontal and vertical we're using. So our vertical actually needs to turn down to one. There's only one um, row. But how many columns do we have? I think it's about 10 off the top of my head. There we go. Now we don't want to select all of these because you can see some of them are the explosion. That's going to be a separate animation that we'll make in just a moment. For it. But for our default animation, it's just going to be essentially these ones here, which just changes the pixels at the very back so it looks like the engine's sort of moving uh, or on fire, you know. So we're going to do that. We're going to click add five frames. Here they are here. We're going to click this little A, which stands for like auto load or auto play. Um, and we can put it on loop because it just wants to go around and around. And depending um, on your preferences, you can sort of set this up differently. So different um, frames have slightly different images on the screen, um, but we can speed it up or slow it down too. So how many have we got? Five. So we might make it so it plays through all of that twice a second or something. So you're going to get lots of action at the back. Now, before we go much further, you can probably see that this is a bit of a blurry image. I think we should sort that out before we add our collision shape. So I am going to actually first save what I've done so far. So I'm going to go con Command S or Control S. I'm going to save this into our scenes file folder called player.tscn. So let's save that. Now let's try and deal with this blurriness. So if we go up to the top where we've got project and project settings, it gives us a whole bunch of stuff that we can play around with. For our blurriness, we want to come down here to textures under rendering. And where it says default texture filter, we want to change it from linear to nearest and then close that up. And now you can see it's much crisper. Much better. All right. So now we need to deal with that collision shape, I think. So I'm going to click on the collision shape 2D, where we've still got this little um, warning next to it, and come over to my inspector on the other side, where we've got shape and empty. So I'm going to click on empty, click new circle shape, and just position this so it covers you know most of the ship. It doesn't need to cover absolutely all of it. So I think something like that is going to be perfect. And I'm going to save that or one more time. And there's one more thing I think we should do, and that would be to add a camera 2D node to this. So we want a way of being able to actually see our ship and follow our ship when we're playing our game. So the way we do that is with a camera 2D node. So we click back to our root node, click on the plus and start typing in camera. And there we go, camera 2D, hit enter. And that now adds a camera to our scene. We're going to tweak it later to make sure it's working exactly the way we want it to. But for now, I just wanted to add it so we can save our scene again. Again, and I think now we should play the scene just so you can see what it would look like so far when we load the game. So I'm going to click on the clapperboard plus, so not the play. We haven't nominated a scene yet that's going to be our main scene and it won't be the player. And as much as we can go into our options and change it, let's just leave that play and click on the clapperboard one. And that should give us our player, um, our um, ship, and you can see the animation at the back there with the fire. So that's exactly what we wanted to get happen. Ing, I think that's the right spot to leave it for this one. And uh, we're gonna take up from here in our next lesson, we're gonna give our um, movement to our ship here, and then we're gonna work on our background and our um, things like that as well. So uh, let's just double check with our must, may, might, so you know everything that you need to get done to ensure that you don't miss anything and your game All is right, working So what perfect. you must get done to keep up with the tutorial series would be to create the project and play a scene adding in the character body 2D, the animated sprite 2D, the collision shape 2D, and the camera 2D. What you may like to do is try finding your own animated sprite and replace mine with yours, or better yet, open mine up and change it. Feel free to use my stuff as a template that you can edit to your heart's content. And what you might like to do to really get ahead is read the documentation on character body 2D. You can find links to the documentation in the game engine itself. Um, many things you can actually actually um, control click on and get that documentation immediately. So that is what you must, may and might want to get and up to. I would like to leave you with this week is very apt when it comes to game development. Time you enjoy wasting is not wasted time.